Welcome back. Thank you for checking out the Expo Hall during the break. Each year we like to spotlight a new movie, book, or other publication. And this year we are happy to have Dr. Catherine Wilkinson joining us, one of the co-editors of All We Can Save. Um, Dr. Catherine Wilkinson is an author, strategist, teacher, and one of 15 women who will save the world according to Time Magazine. Her books on climate include the best-selling anthology, All We Can Save, The Drawdown Review, the New York Times bestseller, Drawdown, and Between God and Green. She co-founded and leads the All We Can Save project with Dr. Ayana Elizabeth Johnson in support of feminist climate leadership. And she co-hosts the podcast, A Matter of Degrees, Telling Stories for the Climate Curious with Dr. Leah Stokes. Previously, Catherine was the principal writer and editor-in-chief at Project Drawdown. She speaks widely, including a TED Talk on climate and gender equality with more than 1.9 million views. A former Rhodes Scholar, Dr. Wilkinson holds a doctorate in geography and environment from Oxford. And before I hand it over to you, I want to mention something a bit personal. Um, I am a um, substitute teacher um, part-time with Arlington, Virginia Public Schools. And in my go bag for substitute teaching, I would always bring with me Drawdown because it was such a great reference material to start conversations with the students. And now I have a companion to go with that in my go bag. Um, and I, I really have appreciated the, um, the breadth of uh, the types of knowledge and experiences that are represented in All We Can Save. Um, so I'd love to hear from you about your own career path, about All We Can Save, and about what you have uh, going forward. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. Um, and I love the idea of drawdown being in a go bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, is, this is very maybe cooler, cooler than uh, any climate climate book really <laughs> has, has had. Um, well, it's so nice to be with you all today. I wish I could see all of the the faces out there. Um, hope you all are um, enjoying early days of spring wherever you are. Um, and I'm delighted to share a little bit about this book, um, about the, the very windy path that I have, have been on over the last couple of decades. And then mostly I'd really like to take your questions um, and kind of take this conversation in any direction that would be the most helpful for, for y'all. Um, but I'm, I'm going to start us, uh, which is sort of a, a place that I always like to start with a poem. And this is a poem that I've loved for a long time, but it's also in All We Can Save. Um, and it's called To Be of Use by Marge Piercy. The people I love the best jump into the work head first without dallying in the shallows and swim off with shore strokes almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element. The black sleek heads of seals bouncing like half submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves an ox to a heavy cart, who pull like water buffalo with massive patience, who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward, who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals and field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. The work of the world is common as mud. Botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust, but the thing worth doing well done has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Greek amphoras for wine or oil, Hopi vases that held corn are put in museums, but you know they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. And that feels like a really appropriate poem for this particular gathering, because this is all about work that couldn't be more real. Um, and all of you finding 
your best ways to contribute in this really this ecosystem of transformation that we are are a part of um, and it's time to figure out really kind of where I fit in that ecosystem. Um, so lest we not come to it in questions, um, I want to say now that I think patience with yourself is maybe one of the biggest things um, as you pursue an eco career. Um, there will be dead ends, there will be U-turns, there will be zigzags. Um, all of that is I think just kind of the way that it goes. <laughs> um, and and I'm not sure enough people told me that early, early on. Um, so as, as David shared, um, I spent a lot of years in, uh, in academia. Um, I did an undergraduate degree at a liberal, liberal arts college, um, actually in religious studies, but also in uh, political science and environmental studies as, as minors. So I've always kind of been a hopeless interdisciplinarian. <laughs> um, and I worked for an environmental nonprofit my first year out of college um, and pretty quickly realized um, I didn't I didn't necessarily want to be the the low woman on that totem pole and that I wanted to go back to grad school um, and get some kind of deeper training and education um, in, in climate change, kind of on the uh, social science side of, of, of climate. And I was very lucky to get a scholarship to, to do that. Um, and I did a body of research looking at um, what was at the time kind of a, a burgeoning climate movement within American evangelical Christianity. So kind of pulling together some of those different um, academic threads from my from my background. And, um, and that research became what I published as a first book, an academic book, not a page turner, I will say, um, but it's called Between God and Green. And, um, and, and then I kind of ran screaming from from academia. Um, I, 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 it just didn't feel quite like the right, the right place for me, at least not not at that time. And when I was leaving grad school, the climate movement was in a pretty weird place. Um, we just this was the early years of the Obama administration, and it looked like we might have the best chance in a generation to pass federal climate policy. And that effort kind of went down, went down in flames and the international climate negotiations fell apart um, in Copenhagen. And lots of folks were saying, okay, you know, we're sort of at a stalemate in terms of national politics around climate progress. We're at a bit of a stalemate around um, these international um, agreements and maybe the thing to do is to look at kind of the level of cities and states and companies as avenues for kind of forward momentum when some of these other things feel really feel really stuck. And I I was interested in whether business could be an interesting avenue to be kind of closer to the site of impact instead of like just banging my head against a wall, um, <laughs> working on on policy, and um, so I spent I spent about five years or so um, in con in consulting um, at a at a big firm and then a really really small one, um, and did some you know did some work that I thought was interesting did some work I thought was really not interesting um and um and ultimately also decided that I'd pretty well tested business um and I I kind of in the course of that work connected with the team at Project Drawdown um and so it was kind of a lucky crossing of paths and um, there was a book that needed to be written <laughs> that 
that that should have been started some months before then and um and i and i ended up joining the team to to kind of do the bulk of the writing on on that book on that book drawdown um and i was at drawdown also for all, almost five years um so there's some kind of <laughs> chunks um in in this in this story and that was a really great opportunity to really explore the whole landscape of climate solutions the practices and technologies that we already have they're in the toolbox they're working um and and what was really cool for me with that was to go from kind of the ivory tower academic researcher position of sort of sitting on the sidelines and analyzing um how another effort was telling its climate story right how it was crafting and kind of shaping um shaping climate discourse to actually getting to roll up my sleeves and and do some of that myself so it was a, a cool shift from um you know sort of onlooker to in in the arena so to speak um and and then kind of in the midst of that work in late 2018, I met Ayana Elizabeth Johnson, um, who's an amazing marine biologist and policy nerd and writer and um, podcast host. Um, and we just immediately hit it off and realized that we had a shared, a shared conviction around trying to make climate work better for women um and and we had an interesting kind of opportunity um on on the table to to host a retreat for 30 women uh climate leaders so we did that together and kind of in the course of working on that you know it kind of birthed a, a partnership um and really probably the best collaboration um, I have experienced in my academic or, or professional life. Um, and that's kind of an, another thread that I think I wish I'd heard more about um, when I was younger, that um, who you're working with is almost always more important than what you are doing. <laughs> And I had been really focused on what do I want to do rather than who do I want to be learning from, um, working with, um, and and so that's been a real a real lesson for me in the last few years that that kind of finding the right collaborations and I would say the same thing is true for a matter of degrees the podcast I, I co-host with Leah Stokes and we have awesome production team that's another really just like thriving thriving partnership um, and I think really good work comes out of really great collaborations um, and and kind of the trust and the joy and the imagination and um, lots of heavy lifting that can that can be be part of that. Um, and that collaboration with Ayana is um, what birthed All We Can Save. Um, so we felt like there was a real need for much more than just what one anthology can do, but for a whole bunch of efforts to kind of amplify voices in the climate movement um, and the work and wisdom of, of women, which has often been um, you know, been a little bit sidelined, um, has not kind of been the, <laughs> not been the, been the main focus, right? Um, and, and that's been especially true, I think, for, for women of color. So that was the impetus for the book. It has 60 amazing contributors, essayists, poets, um, and, and there's also beautiful art by a woman, Madeline Jubilee Saito, um, who's just, fantastic and we are kind of carrying the mission forward through the all we can save project um, which is a new tiny baby <laughs> nonprofit um not even nonprofit we have a fiscal sponsor which i'm happy to talk about what what that means um but uh 
we are going to be doing some work around curriculum, making it really easy to use this book in the classroom and beyond, um, and reading circles and hopefully a, a virtual mentoring series, which I'll make sure to share with David um, as, as those plans develop, because we would love to, to invite all of you. Um, and uh, and yeah, some, some other cool things, if you want to kind of check out what we're what we're up to, you can can go to our website. It's allwecansave.earth. And um, and that also includes resources for reading circles. Um, so if if you have a, have an, an inkling that you might want to read this book um, and have some conversation with friends or um, colleagues or um, you know, folks, folks, you get into good trouble with. Um, there are resources on on the website to to do that, um, and there will be a, a paperback version of the book coming out this summer. So, um, we know the the hardcover is um, is a little bit pricey. Um, so, so that'll be be shifting as as well. Um, yeah, but I think I'll I think I'll leave it there, David, and see. See if any questions have come in. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple questions um, from myself, the team, as well as from audience members already. Um, one of the questions that I did get was, what was your process for um, identifying and recruiting the artists, the poets, the writers that um, came together for to contribute to All We Can Save? Yeah, I think. Um... Probably a good metaphor is that it was a little bit like quilting. <laughs> um, so, you know, so we, Ayana and I often, at the, you know, a, a project for us will start with some Google spreadsheet. That's like, that's the starting, <laughs> that's the starting gate. Um, and, and we started to brainstorm kind of, you know, what topics do we want to make sure get covered in, in this book? Um, are there, are there, people who we just think we we've got to have a piece by them we just you know we we are so excited about their work um we've we've got to have that um sometimes there were topics where we thought we know we know we want something on for example um litigation um and we weren't sure who who that should be um and kind of through talking to some folks we found our way to to abby dylan who's the President of Earth Justice, um, who's a fantastic environmental lawyer. Um, also, it turns out a great writer um, and just a, a wonderful human being. So it was like a little bit art, a little bit science, kind of piecing this to together. Um, we had originally set out to do a book of about 20 essays. Um, very quickly, uh, it, that snowballed. We ended up with 41 essays, at which point our publisher said, you're done. <laughs> You know, we get it. There are a lot more, a lot more um, things worth saying, but you can't say them in this, in this particular book. Um, and we found Madeline and her art thanks to a tweet from the Sunrise Movement. Um, so that was kind of lucky, you know, lucky happenstance. And at some point, we we hadn't originally planned to include poetry, and then at some point. I think we just realized that the book couldn't be what we wanted it to be without poetry. Um, and, and so we grabbed a bunch of environmental poetry anthologies and other, other books and did a bunch of, of digging around and, um, and found some really, some really great pieces to include and also pulled in some pieces from poets um, that, that we've loved for a long time. So, Probably, you know, that's not the way real quilters would do it, right? We were like first time quilters. So we're like, we've got some denim and some plaid and polka dots, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're happy with kind of the, the emergent nature um, of the book and, and kind of the way it found a wholeness um, in, in its structure. That's awesome. Um, as a as a fabric and and needle uh, crafts person myself, I think there is there is some good parallels to you know um, having a plan, but then seeing thread or fabric that you weren't planning on integrating into your piece, and then saying, you know what, this just this has to be in it. 
Um, it's got to be in it. Yeah, for, totally. And and of course, it was really important to us to cover lots of different disciplines and fields and approaches, lots of different backgrounds, age diversity, racial diversity, urban, rural, across. We, we did bound the book to the U.S., <laughs> which was sort of one way to keep it keep it manageable. Um, but we wanted to make sure, you know, that there were, um, yeah, that there was a real sense of the kaleidoscope um, of, of perspectives. Awesome. What are some of the most surprising or perhaps inspiring things to have come out of the book and or the project? Yeah. Um, I think the reading circles have, have really been have been one of those things. Um, we we wanted to see if the book could be a spark for community building, right? For kind of creating some of those relational connections that we know um, are really important for any movement, any effort for social change. Um, and David, you're just frozen. I want to make sure everyone can still. It's me. a little bit glitchy, but I can hear you okay. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Let me just, tr let me try, let me try one thing. Oh, okay. That seems like it might be better. Thank you all for patience. This is rural, realities of rural internet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so, so I created this kind of 10 session reading circles set of materials and you know people said to us like mm, no, people aren't going to do that you know this is kind of really? like the ap class and maybe you should just design like the freshman introductory seminar sort of you know sort of sort of thing and we just we were like no let's we want to give this a go and um people have taken up the reading circles with a great deal of enthusiasm i think now about 550 people have signed up to lead circles um, and as people finish they're they're beginning to take a survey about their experience and what they learned and what skills they used and you know um, kind of their emotional experiences and more than 90 percent of the folks who've replied to the survey have said that the circles built community and more than 60% of them say that their circles are continuing in some way, which is feels really feels really cool. Um, and and then sort of, you know, qualitatively, people have shared like, I felt really paralyzed with grief before this circle, and now I feel empowered. I feel like I didn't have any role models before, and now I feel like I have a sense of belonging in the climate movement. Um, just you know the the kinds of things that we hoped for, but you just don't know until until you until you give it a go. So we're hoping to to grow the reading circles um, over you know over over the months to come, and and hopefully even more so when when the paperback um, comes mm -hmm. out. And similarly, we've been really like sort of surprised and delighted by the huge diversity of academic disciplines that people are teaching this book within from um you know ethics to english to earth systems to like you name it it seems to be to be making its way into lots of different places so that's been that's been really exciting as well yeah and i think that that kind of speaks to the power of it as well i have been a member of book clubs through church and and in peace corps and i've never um been a part of one that that took a anthology or a collection as part as central to um to the club or to the circle and i think that that's a really great idea because it gives people who have different preferences different ideas um a place to connect to it um and you you mentioned about the paralysis when especially when thinking about the vastness of um yeah. ecology and, and climate change in particular um and that is probably one of the biggest questions or concerns um that we hear from the students the high school students and the college students that that we work with is that that how do you how do you take that first step when there's so much that needs to be done um and 
I was hoping you could speak to that. And as an interdisciplinarian yourself, you know, how do you navigate that, that I, I have a path um, in, in something that's so much bigger than myself? Yeah. Um, you know, I think sometimes, sometimes it's really helpful to feel small <laughs> if if that makes sense like um you know the even just when i think back to you know high school and my early days of kind of student activism to where we are now like this team is so much bigger right there is so much more good work being done um the climate movement is now three or maybe even four generations deep. Um, it can, I think, sometimes feel really lonely in this work, um, but there's a really big we <laughs> that is, that's, that's, that's showing up. Um, and I, you know, I also try to remember kind of beyond the humans that you know, one of the sort of truths of ecology is that life keeps creating more life, um, that like life creates conditions that are conducive for more life in the in the words of, of Janine Benyes. And so when I remember that there's this huge life force operating on this planet and it just keeps going forward, um, that makes me feel both very small and a lot more powerful. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and I just try to remember that for each of us, our role is to find a way to be helpers in, in that. Um, we don't have to do it all, right? We don't have to do it alone. In fact, I think going it alone is perhaps the worst, the worst way, the worst way forward. Um, and and the truth is that the work is enormous, right? And it does feel some days like the boulder is rolling back down the mountain. Um, and it's hard to read the latest news of, you know, which scientific study has come out telling us more, more bad news. Um, and so I, yeah, I think, it is often that sense of community and partnership that keeps us going um, when when the work is hard. So Ayana calls calls this, um, you know, you, you got to have your climate squad. Um, and I think, you know, I think I think that's I think that's really true. And I think it's also really true as you navigate through career stuff. Right. I, I remember kind of coming out of grad school and realizing like, I'm not, I don't, I don't really have a great mentor. A lot of my friends don't really have great mentors. A lot of, we're kind of trying to do things that are different than the generation before us. So maybe what we're mostly going to have to do is have a little, you know, kind of brain trust with each other and, and bounce ideas around and try to figure things out. And when we hit, kind of a, a crossroads where we've got to make a decision about, is it this way or is it this way? You know, having those folks who you trust to, to, to talk those things through. Um, and for me, that has, has more often than not been peers rather than someone who's, you know, a, years ahead of me, um, you know, who, who figured, figured it out. We're, we're figuring out, I think a lot of things um for the first time in in this work yeah, yeah. And i i think that the um the section of the book there was there was feel and there was nourish and and i think that in times when when that that pressure is building and and the feeling that you have to do it all or do it alone you know those are good places yeah. to go um we do have to close this session unfortunately um, I, I would be happy to <laughs> continue chatting. Um, I really appreciate the time uh, that you've come uh, to spend with us and with our audience um, and as well the work that you've provided. 
Um, I will definitely be joining one of the book, book circles. I saw them on Instagram uh, the other day. I'm really excited about that. Um, so thank you again, uh, Catherine, for joining us uh, today. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to learn about your personal career path and the work that you're doing uh, with All We Can Save. Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure to be with y'all. And just in 10 seconds, I want to say to Emma's question, don't let a book be the thing that keeps you from writing. Just start writing. Writing at any scale is what will get you moving forward um, towards the possibility of a book in the future. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye.